Welcome to the episode of Jay Leno's Garage. You might remember a while back, we introduced you to a guy named Magnus Walker. He did a uh, terrific YouTube video. It's a short film, really, called The Urban Outlaw. You should check it out. It was about his lifestyle. He's very much a Porsche guy, especially Porsche 911s. And he's a clothing designer and, uh, well, just one of those, I call him a modern renaissance man. Magnus, come on in, buddy. Hey, Good to Jay. see you again. Thanks for having me back. Good to see you again. Now, he takes uh, a Porsche 911s primarily. Correct. And uh, would you say modify or personalize? What would you call it? I would say I personalize. I mean, this car's a great example. It's instantly recognizable as a Porsche 911, but when you look a little closer, you'll see a lot of uh, my signature touches, modifications, right. or personalization that I've been doing to the car. And the nice thing is, even the factory has taken an interest in what you do. Huh? Yeah, recently uh, we got invited by Porsche to tour their uh, museum and their factory in uh, Germany. They also invited us to their 50th anniversary uh, event just last week, at, actually at Amelia Island. And uh, the best part to the story is we flew down to Atlanta, where my wife's from, and uh, got met at the airport by a Porsche marketing guy who uh, gave us the keys to a brand new 991 C4S with 11 miles on it. Well. Five days later, we gave that car back with uh, 1,104 miles on it. and we've, uh, <laughs> pretty good. Yeah, we got quite a few road stories. Some we can talk about, some we can Yeah, can't. I think it's great that the factory has taken an interest in owners of older Porsches. You know, a lot of times factories just want to keep selling the new stuff. Right. But the great thing about Porsche is they do go back, and they're a great heritage-based company. And they love, they don't mind it so much when people personalize, I guess, their cars, because a lot of factories... Uh, they don't like you to change anything or touch anything. Let's, uh, let's talk about this car, because that's why we're here. This is a 1972 Porsche 911. What was it originally? A 911T, which okay. was Porsche's base model. They had three models, the T, E, and S. This right. actually was a numbers matching car uh, originally when I got it, meaning it had the original motor. Mm -hmm. I, uh, the original motor is no longer in the car, but I have that original motor on a pallet in my warehouse, just right. in case I ever want to put it back to stock, but uh, I have fun building these uh, sport purpose hot rod inspired 911s and customizing them, personalizing them. Well, let's them. talk about the stuff that's not so obvious. He's, uh, well, if we start at the front, yeah. I mean, instantly the car is the iconic 911 shape. Right. But a couple of my signature touches start right here with the uh, integrated R turn signals. Normally there would be a lens here for the turn signal. Right. That's been fully grafted in. I've got the race-inspired center hood filler right there. Love we'll, that. We'll show those details in a little bit. It has custom steel uh, profiled front fender flares, which are fully rounded and rolled. So we've got that aggressive sort of race look. It's sort of a streetable race car. It's got the little plexi louvered for uh, right. that. There's the air conditioning right there. There's your air conditioning yeah, right there. Yeah, little aircraft bubble vent. Is this mirror factory? Uh, no, that is not a, a factory mirror. Because <laughs> it... It, it doesn't look so much like a sport mirror. Yeah, it's yeah. just a real mirror. When it's you a real see mirror where you can see what's behind, behind you. you. Yeah, Something yeah. needs to slow me down. Okay, now this also, the plexiglass here. Yeah, louvered uh, plexi window, uh, signature drilled door handles. And what's the purpose of the louver here? Because it's not an open louver, no air Well, you can get two types of louvers. The open one where you get air in, but unfortunately that also lets moisture and rain in. This right. is uh, basically just a lightweight plexi window okay. with a great aesthetic vibe, but... I went to the trouble to actually cut the plexi down and insert it in the original frame. Oh, I see. Normally this would glue in without the frame, but I like the continuity of the line right. all the way through, so I cut it down and installed it in the frame. A little subtle touch here, the drill door handle. Yeah, this is uh, also an earlier short wheelbase door handle from a car from the 60s, retrofitted onto this later long wheelbase car, but I took the time to uh, drill the... Uh, door handles, countersink them, and get, get it chrome plated. So it's one of those things that when you come to the car, it's just a little touch every time yeah, you get in the yeah. car. It's something a little bit different. And it's kind of fun. If you're a Porsche trivia expert, you, you will spot that right away. This yeah, the earlier this car's car. got a lot of touches that came on an earlier car, backdated onto a later car. Nice flares back here as well. This is nicely done. Yeah, this is a steel turbo uh, flare, which actually has a pretty pronounced lip that my uh, body guy, Frank, hand dollies down and fully round, so it's got its own sort of unique line. It's also rolled on the inside and uh, it's got a great fit around the bumper, so it gives it an aggressive stance. Moving to the rear. I love the color combination too, the three colors. Yeah, I like the tri-color vibe. The uh, metallic blue was the original color of the car, so I wanted to integrate that into the finished color scheme. Now you have 911 STR. Correct. The ST was the Porsche sort of race car, rally car, in the 70, 71, 72. 
Right. The R was the car that sort of uh, put Porsche on the map in 67, 68. So I combined the two together, my right. two favorite cars. I took elements from both and created what I call the STR. Okay. So the uh, integrated turn signals here are something that the uh, factory never did. This was right. actually a piece that was normally screwed in, but he's now grafted in. Nicely done. Yeah, my other signature touch is the louvered deck lid, which right. uh, does aid cooling and obviously adds a lot of style. Very cool. Uh, what do we have here? Let's see. First of all, uh, the the floor, plate floor there, the plate yeah. on the floor. Yeah, those perforated uh, drilled floorboards from Renline. I was saying earlier on about the continuity of adding lightness yeah. and drilling out a lot of things. The floorboards are the perfect example of that. And that's a piston there? Uh, <laughs> no, that's a Renline uh, shifter. That's actually an aftermarket. No, no, but the base. The base looks like a piston. That's oh, yeah, yeah, it looks like that. Yeah, it yeah. does look like that. Cool. And the wood gear shift knob? Yeah, that's off a 917, well, it's a 917 inspired uh, lightweight wood shift knob. Right, I've right. Uh, backdated the gauges for a chrome bezel. A Porsche of this period would actually have a black bezeled ring, but those are more short wheel based details that right. I put on the car, along with the early chrome mirror. Normally, Porsches of this area would have a mirror that was glued onto the windshield. Right. What I did was backdated that retro uh, chrome mirror. And how do you open the door on the inside? Oh, uh, you just pull oh, it. Oh, you got this. the pull handle. Yeah, I see. Okay. pull strap. Oh, the pull strap. Yeah, earlier uh, short wheel base cranks, vintage uh, race mark steering wheel. Radio delete. Yeah, radio delete right there. It's got a one piece knee guard. So if you look inside, everything is either black or silver. Outside right, right. is pretty colorful, but inside is all business like. I like the, uh, I do love those, the metal floor pans. There. Yeah, and I've got a 917 inspired hinged fully adjustable gas pedal, uh, the foot rest right there, uh, bolt in roll bar. Tell me about the steering wheel. Harness. I have a passion for these vintage steering wheels, either Momo's or Race Mark. And right. uh, to me, it's, it's the connection of uh, the, from the wheel to the uh, steering wheel to the road. It's, it just feels good to have an old vintage steering wheel, like your favorite pair of old shoes, as opposed to buying a brand new steering wheel. Now it's we, a little bit of history. We talked earlier about not the stock engine. Which engine is in this? This has a short stroke 3.2. Uh, okay. The car weighs under 2,200 pounds wow. with 10 gallons of gas. The motor's a short stroke 3.2 that puts out approximately 275 horsepower. Would you like to see it? Yeah, I would like to see it. That's pretty amazing. So what we have here is a uh, short stroke 3.2 motor. Nice and clean. Yeah. You know, I used to say dirt doesn't slow me down, but when I decided with this build, I uh, used a local builder called Aaron Burnham, who's up in um, Camarillo, just up the road. Let's take a look at the front end here. Let's open the trunk. So what we got going on here, Jay, is uh, the front end of the car. Basically, we wow, have a, it's nice and clean. Yeah, yeah, it's nice and clean. We deleted the battery boxes. We uh, put this lightweight battery in the smuggler's box. Oh, okay. Right here. So we've got more of those perforations. We have the RSR strut brace, which is also drilled, the center hood filler tank, and that's pretty much it. You see, it's uh, pretty much all one color, very clean, very functional. It's amazing how clean it is. I love the battery box. Well, let's shut that. Let's shut that down. Okay, and uh, let's take it for a ride. She goes good. It's very tractable. You can drive it on the street. It's not some cammy race car. You got to keep hitting the throttle. Yeah, it's got a lot of mid-range uh, yeah. low-down torque. Mid-range is excellent. You know, sports cars are all about how they make you feel, and you just feel good driving this thing. You know, the funny thing is, the fun thing about 275 horsepower in a car like this as opposed to a car with 600 horsepower, you really enjoy the long pull. Yeah, yeah. As of sometimes when you get these cars that are so massively powerful, re, re, I mean, you're there. Yeah, yeah. You know? And sometimes there's a great, yeah, here you go. Here's what I'm talking about. Yeah, just let it run. You know, I never quite understand this obsession with top speed, 240, 250. All the fun happens between 40 miles an hour and 120. It's like driving an orchestra. That's a sweet spot. Comes on there. Yeah, very nice. Boy, you really could drive this all day. So it feels pretty fast. Oh, it feels very fast. To 
get those super ballots. Fifth gear, 60 miles an hour, barely turning 3,100 RPM. But fifth is boring, let's drop it down again. gear. There you go, now there it's sounding go. like it. The third's even better. Drive 911 is so different than any other car. That's what makes guys bond with them so well, is that they, uh, th there's a particular driving style. And the more I drive this, the more I get into it. And it's really an exciting, exciting, uh, exciting car to drive. Sounds like you're learning the Porsche language, I'm learning Jay. the Porsche language. Doesn't matter whether you speak Japanese or English, That's the right. common language is Porsche. Porsche passion. Well, I love these brakes. The more you pressure apply, the quicker you stop, which I know sounds silly. Yeah, that but, makes sense though, right? But there's, there's no power assist, so you really have to apply. It's almost like the anti-lock is built into your own leg because you, yeah. you can feel when it's starting to grip and you can back off just a hair and modulate it. So yeah. it's, uh, you got your own built-in ABS Yeah, right built-in ABS, that's what it is. Left foot or right foot, whichever you prefer. the cool thing about these Porsches. I, I wouldn't say we're thrashing it, but we're driving it hard. We're keeping it in the higher rev range. We're sitting in traffic bumper to bumper. Uh, uh, oil temperature, water. Oil temperature is 190. And listen to it idle. It just idles, you know. It's basically a race motor, but it doesn't load up. You can drive it on the street. Uh, really a lot of fun. Magnus, thank you so much. Thanks, Jay. It's been great. And check out Magnus's website. Check it out. We'll see you guys next week. Take care.